Uh, I also serve as a national spokesperson and was co-founder of Physicians for a National Health Program. Our 16,000 physician members support single-payer, nonprofit national health insurance because of the overwhelming evidence that lesser reforms will fail us, and we support H.R. 676 that Mr. Conyers has introduced. Health reform must address the cost crisis not only for the uninsured but for the insured as well. My research group found that illness and medical bills contributed to about half of all medical bankruptcies in the U.S. And in 2001, and even more than that in 2007, I might say, in a study we have coming out shortly. Strikingly, three-quarters of these medically bankrupt American families, and uh, remember, a million Americans are bankrupted by medical problems each year, three-quarters of them had insurance when they first got sick. But that coverage was too skimpy to protect them from financial collapse. The employer-based system is not working, even for those who have employer-based coverage. A single-payer reform would make care affordable through vast savings on bureaucracy and profits. As my colleagues and I have shown in research published in the New England Journal of Medicine, administration now consumes 31 cents of every health dollar in the U.S., nearly double what costs are in Canada. In other words, if we cut our bureaucratic costs to Canadian levels, we'd save nearly $400 billion annually more than enough to cover the uninsured and to eliminate co-payments and deductibles for all Americans. By simplifying the, its payment system, Canada has cut insurance over its head to 1%, 1 percent, one twentieth of Aetna's level. They don't pay their CEO $225,000 each day, as Aetna's CEO received. And they've eliminated mounds of expensive paperwork for doctors and hospitals. In fact, while cutting insurance overhead could save us $131 billion each year. Our insurers waste much more than that because of the useless paperwork they inflict on hospitals and on doctors. A Canadian hospital gets paid like a fire department does in the U.S. It negotiates a global budget with the single insurance plan in its province and gets one check each month that covers virtually all costs. They don't have to bill for every Band-Aid and aspirin tablet. At my hospital, we know our budget January 1, but we collect it piecemeal in fights with hundreds of insurers over thousands of bills each day. The result is that hundreds of people work for Mass General's billing department, while Toronto General employs a handful, mostly to send bills to Americans who wander across the border. Altogether, U.S. hospitals could save $120 billion annually on bureaucracy under a single-payer system, and doctors in the U.S. waste about $95 billion each year fighting with insurance companies and the useless paperwork they inflict on us. Significantly, these massive potential savings can only be achieved through a single-payer reform. A health reform plan with a public plan option might realize some savings on insurance overhead. But as long as multiple private plans coexist with the public plan, hospitals and doctors would have to maintain our costly billing and internal cost tracking operations. Indeed, my colleagues and I estimate that if half of all privately insured Americans switch to a public plan with overhead at Medicare's levels, you'd get administrative savings about 9% of what could be achieved under a single payer. While administrative savings from reform that includes a Medicare-like public option are modest, at least they're real. In contrast, other widely touted cost control measures are completely illusory. A raft of studies shows that prevention saves lives, but it usually actually costs money. I spend my day as a primary care doctor doing it because it saves lives, but we have no illusions that we're saving money. The recently completed Medicare demonstration project found no cost savings from, from, from chronic disease management and claims that computers will save money are based on pure conjecture. We have a study about to be published that of 3,000 hospitals showing that hospitals with higher computerization levels actually have higher costs. My home state of Massachusetts recent experience with health reform illustrates the danger of believing overly optimistic cost controls. Before its passage, the reforms backers promised many of the things being promised for lesser reforms here in D.C. Instead, costs have skyrocketed, rising 23 percent in just two years, and insurance exchanges added 4 percent 
of its, for its own administrative costs to the already high costs of care. One in five Massachusetts residents still say they can't afford care. In sum, a single-payer reform would make universal comprehensive coverage affordable diver by diverting hundreds of billions from bureaucracy to patient care. Lesser reforms, even those that include a public plan, can't realize such savings, while reforms that maintain a major role for private insurers may seem politically expedient. They're economically and medically nonsensical. Thank you.